Here at the St. John Clark Pain Treatment Center, we look at the body a little bit differently. This is a tensegrity model, and I'd like you to imagine for a minute that these beams are the bones, and these strings are the muscles, and this is a pelvis, and these are the legs. When I move just one piece, the entire model has to adjust or compensate. Imagine when you move just this piece here, all of these strings get stressed out. So when you come in and you have pain, it's really important to look at your body as a whole to try and figure out where it's coming from. Neurosomatic therapy are specific manual manipulations based on a postural analysis that encourage correct biomechanics of a joint. It's almost easier for me to just show you what we do rather than it is to explain it, so I'm going to walk you through a few simple cases and teach you to think the way that we do. There are many principles that the body adheres to, but I'm going to share with you just two of them today so you can see how we apply them in our treatment. The first one is the writing reflex. It is the body's desire to maintain equilibrium by always having the eyes meeting the horizon at level. That means you can compensate anywhere below the eyes, but your eyes will always be straight. The next concept we have to play with is called Lovett Reactor. This states that certain vertebrae in the body move in similar rotation with each other, while others move in opposition. So the first case I'm going to walk you through today is carpal tunnel syndrome. The patient comes into our clinic and they say that they have carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, they may or may not have already had the surgery, which is actually very simple surgery. This is the carpal tunnel right here, and they just make a little incision and they free up some space around the nerve. Now that's all well and good if you do actually have carpal tunnel syndrome. So my first question to a patient when they come in is which fingers on your hand are going numb? If they answer either the thumb or the pinky, then I know it is not the real carpal tunnel syndrome and we have to look elsewhere. The nerves that run into the hand can be entrapped in many places. So we have to do our postural analysis to try and figure out where it's coming from. A typical carpal tunnel case when they come to me looks like this. They'll have one shoulder much lower than the other, possibly a little bit forward, and maybe with their head tilted to one side. Next, their shoulder might be externally rotated and their forearm supinated. As your therapist, it is my job to recognize your postural distortions and then based on those postural distortions, recognize which muscles could be entrapping the nerve into the hand. So imagine you're my patient and you've come in and we've done all the work from your neck all the way down to your hand, but the problem keeps coming back. Well, this is where the Levitt reactor principle comes into play. Sometimes the problem isn't really in the neck. Sometimes it's in the low back. So remember our tensegrity model? When you add a force here, it is felt throughout the entire structure. So the real problem could be quite some distance from where you're experiencing the symptoms. The next case I'm going to share with you today is sciatica, or the creeping lightning, as one of my patients calls it. Sciatica is shooting electrical pain down the back of your leg. Pain that is described as shooting or electric is often nerve pain, and the sciatic nerve exits the lower part of the spine, and much like carpal tunnel syndrome, can be entrapped in many places. The most common entrapment point for the sciatic nerve is right here, in the sciatic notch, which is right next to the attachment point for the piriformis muscle, the strongest external rotator of the thigh. So when a patient comes to me with sciatica, I do my postural analysis and I often find that it's accompanied by a scoliosis. So I'd like to remind you of the writing reflex principle that says that the eyes will always want to see straight no matter what compensation is going on below. So whenever I see a scoliosis, I have to wonder, why is the spine compensating? What we often find is a structural imbalance such as an anatomically shorter leg, which tilts the spine from the start and lessens the distance that piriformis has to run, entrapping the sciatic nerve. So if you have a pain that won't go away, maybe it's time you saw a neurosomatic therapist, a specialist who can find the source of your pain. And as we learned today, that could be quite some distance from where you're feeling it. This has been Megan Moore from the St. John Clark Pain Treatment Center in Tampa and Clearwater, Florida.